morning and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be looking at how to create your own promotional video for your small business using video editing software called Adobe Premiere Pro. We're very excited to have Scott Allen back here who is uh, an experienced instructor. He teaches all sorts of uh, different technology uh, uh, subjects for Pinnacle Charter School. He's also an experienced corporate educator as well. And as you are probably aware, this program is brought to you today by North Metro SBDC, Small Business Development Center, where our mission is to help small businesses to grow and prosper with one-on-one -on -one free consulting and also free and low-cost education programs like this one here. And you probably found this program through our website, northmetrosbdc.com. But if not, you can always go and check it out. You'll see our next program offerings, and you can book that free consultation with any of our business experts as well. So we're very excited today. We do have your cameras and microphones muted. We want you to ask as many questions as possible, though. That will help mm -hmm. us make sure that we're giving you good quality information. So you can type in those questions at any time. I'll be monitoring that chat, uh, question window. And um, yep, feel free to just drop in a question at any point to interrupt and we'll try to make sure that it's clear. I'm also making a video recording of this entire webinar and I'll send it out to you later so that you can review it at your leisure. And finally, that's gonna tell you a little bit more um, what we're offering uh, through Scott, some one-on-one -on -one extra help with this material as well. Why don't you tell us a little bit, Scott, about what you'd, what you'd like. Sure. So um, I am teaching at Pinnacle High School. I've been teaching for over 20 years, doing all the business apps kind of stuff. I am personally looking for um, kind of an internship, not just for me, but for my students. I like to have practical information shared with my students. I know the material very well, and I can teach out of a book and everything but it would be great for me as an educator to kind of see firsthand knowledge of how this software or other pieces of business is used so that I can share that information with my students. And then we are also at Pinnacle trying to begin this development of a business pathway program where students will come in their freshman year and by the time they're done as a senior, they'll have a lot of experience in the business field and working with um, other community colleges and stuff like that to kind of fast track them in the business area. So I'm also very interested in networking out and connecting with local business owners that might want to take on um, interns possibly when they're seniors. And if I'm going to put my name on it, you can be assured that they're going to be good quality students. I'm not gonna send anybody that I'm afraid of, you know, that they're not gonna meet my standard and it's pretty high. So all of that said, I think we're uh, ready to go, John. What do you think? I think so, I think so. I put your email in the chat window so that everybody has uh, the ability to reach out to you, Scott, after the program. Sure. But yeah, let's dive in, let's make a promo. All right, so I would say the first thing that you need to do before you consider getting into Adobe Premiere Pro is to just have the tools that are necessary for you to begin this so you don't stumble into this and then you don't have the adequate equipment that you need to perform your task. So um, in my notes that I had you guys look at, one of the most important things that you should get is a portable hard drive. And on my screen here and in the link below, I have uh, given you guys an example of a one terabyte portable hard drive that you can buy and use so that you don't use up all of the resources for your computer. The laptops that we have at the school that I teach at, they're good and they do their job, but I know with the work I do, I will fill the laptop up probably within a couple of weeks. So I, I need to, it is essential for me to get a portable hard drive. I would recommend at least one terabyte. Um, you can see there in Amazon that they can go up to even five terabytes, uh, 115 bucks for five terabytes. That's gonna last you a long time. And it depends upon, you know, just how much you're gonna actually use this, but even for 50 bucks for one, that's a really good deal. 
Another thing that you might want to consider doing is making sure that you have a good quality microphone, something again that you are comfortable with using because you're probably going to do a lot of voice recording. Some people prefer the headset, some people for, prefer the freestanding ones that sit at the table. I'm not going to berate you or argue with you about which microphones are better or whatever because it's really up to you and your comfortability level. Um, for cameras, that's a very personal thing. And I won't even recommend to you what cameras to use because everybody has different needs with that. Um, finally, the last thing that I would recommend to you is to get yourself um, kind of a extender for a USB. If you're gonna use a microphone, now you have an extended hard drive and maybe your, like my laptop only has like two or three ports for USB. If you're connecting all of these different jacks in, plus maybe you have your cell phone and you're gonna connect, maybe you did some recording off of your phone or whatever, you're gonna run out of those spaces. So you're probably gonna to wanna to buy one of these two and it will read just like an extended USB and it will read all of the pieces in directly into your PC. Any questions on the purchasing part before I go on to the next piece? We're all good, I think. Looks good, I'm not seeing any questions. And okay. I might just mention that, you know, mm -hmm. we've had people, small businesses create um, like excellent quality video just using a smartphone. And yes. so, don't let a, a big bill prevent you from at least giving it a try. Yeah. What, what I've noticed in the field is that you can have a really beautiful, expensive camera that shoots wonderful images, but if your story isn't good, if your video doesn't have a plan, you'll have beautiful garbage. <laughs> so what we want um, right <laughs> so on that um i would recommend to you whenever you get involved in this you're going to want to write a script and i've given you an example in here even if you just write out what you're going to say word for word as you are recording yourself and you're talking in the microphone you're going to notice you're going to stumble, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to have to delete it and re-record it again. Even in the tools that I've given you and the files, there's going to be mistakes and you're going to make them. So I'm going to show you even how to cut all those bad parts out so it looks like it, it looks and sounds flawless. But you need to have some kind of a script. Again, you can follow anything you want. You can do that. You can go full blown and go Star Wars and write it all out like that. Um, some people really like to illustrate and do it by that. I am not handy at all with that kind of stuff. I like to write all of mine out. Um, this is a version, um, a two column script where you have video. What do we see on the left? So we have wide shot of Jimmy and so on and so forth, very wide shots and people that are more into the artistic pieces can dive into that. And then audio, what do we hear? Whether it's sound effects or dialogue, it just depends upon you and your comfortability level. And again, if you're just winging it and you're just wanting to, I just wanna type it all out, that's fine, whatever works for you. But don't just hit record and hope things put together because they won't, they really won't. You want to have purposeful shots so that as your plan is being developed, you know, okay, I'm gonna take this shot and put it here for this piece. I'm gonna have this audio, I'm gonna have this song playing in the background and so on and so forth. No plan is a disaster and any kind of a plan is much better and that will make your, you know, your very expensive video equipment purchase more justified so all right um next up um the folders that i gave you i want to talk about file management for a minute if you just download everything off of your phones let's say you have an iphone it's just going to come up as like image 7485 you have no meaning of what that is so you're going to want to create 
some kind of a filing system and I've created a, a beginning piece for you, what audio do you have? What do they sound like? And you should record your narration and name it something that you will remember. If it just says audio recording one, you have no idea what that means. So you're gonna want to rename your files into something that makes sense to you so you can access your files very quickly. You're also going to see that I have this broken up into three different folders, audio, pictures, and video. You're gonna want to have that always so that you can quickly identify your files when you're dragging and dropping them into Adobe Premiere Pro. That way, when you need that, you can quickly access that folder, find the file that you need, and it will be there for you. Um, same thing with your video files. You're probably gonna need to rename them into something that makes sense to you. Now, how do you get these files? You can steal them from YouTube, and there are websites that you can go to where you can literally steal them and use them for what you're gonna use it for. Um, I strongly discourage against that because if this is gonna be a promotional product for your business, you're likely going to encounter copyright infringement. You might need a really good lawyer on your hands if, or at least pay licensing fees or something like that. Um, I would encourage you instead that you use royalty-free stock footage. And there are companies that you can use like uh, Storyblocks. I really love this website. For $600 a year, you can get any sort of stock footage, whether it's video, it's audio, pictures. You literally can download their entire website if you wanted to and um, begin using these pieces to make your promotional video happen. Um, if you're gonna upload it up to, let's say YouTube or other social media, there is a link that will directly go to Storyblocks and they'll talk to each other. The Storyblocks company will say, oh yes, Scott has a license with us and we're gonna go ahead and let him use all of these things. And it's pretty effortless and flawless. You just gotta hit accept, yes, you know, whatever, and it will transition and you shouldn't be flagged for any copyright violations or anything on YouTube if you're gonna upload it there, for example. Otherwise, if you are taking it and you are gonna upload it and use this as a promotional piece, YouTube is very likely gonna flag it. They're gonna probably pull those clips and black out your screen so that part can't be seen and you may have the entire video flagged. So. For educators, we're a little bit more lucky because we have fair use because we're doing it for educational purposes and we're not violating anything because we're not making any money off of it. But for a business setting, that's very different. And you're gonna have to follow those copyright rules so that you don't get your business in trouble. All right, or you could make your own, but that, ooh, that takes a long time. All right. I'm done talking, let's actually get to work. <laughs> Any questions before we start? No questions so far. All right, I hope I'm not boring you, but I know all of this is really relevant information for you business owners. All right, so first, we're going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro on your computer, go ahead and launch that. And I'm gonna also include in here, in my, um, template folder here. I have given you the file Adobe Premiere lesson for staff and staff redo. So if you completely mess up anything, you can download these two files. I just put them up and you can look at those example files for you and kind of recreate it on your own. When you load these, by the way, it's going to yell at you because I had these made already in advance. Um, oops. 
forgive me here for a moment. I'm launching it from here instead of directly from my uh, portable hard drive here. So um, if you do load these through Adobe Premiere Pro, it's going to just let you know that this is using an older version when I made it earlier this school year. And we're just going to update it with the newest converted thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And I'm going to apologize to you guys. Um, this is going to get um, laggy, I believe. So as we're doing a lot of resources with your computer, there, there could be a lot of lag in this video. I hope not. Um, but um, if there is, please just let me or John know, and we'll do that. I'm going to move all this out of the way now. So here we go. If you followed my directions and you did download these folders and you have the resources within them, um, you're going to see that this is a very seamless, effortless piece here. Um, I should actually follow what you guys are on. So you went to new project. The first thing that it's going to ask you is a file name. Where do you want to save it? And I am going to save this just as sample lesson. And it's doing that because it wants to automatically save for you all of the time. So you're not working on your project for an hour. The power goes out, you lose your work, and then you're cursing at the bad weather that we had. This is automatically going to save constantly to your computer. You're also going to want to make sure that you choose the right location of where you want to put this. If you are using a laptop and it does not have a lot of disk space, this is, again, another reason why you want to get um, one of the portable hard drives so that you're not going to blow through all of your memory here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I go to my external. I'm just going to drop it into this folder. It's OK for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we are ready to start. I did select to do another one. Oh, it won't let me do it there. Okay, I'm going to put it under video projects then. Now will it let me? Okay. All right. So now, again, as long as you have done all of your homework before class started, if you have these three folders and inside them has all of your elements, all you're going to do here is click on these three and drag and drop them into your import media to start. If you hold the shift key down, you can click on audio. Now hold shift, click on video, and all three of those files will now be selected. And now you can click with your mouse on one of the folders, drag it over to import media start, let go, and it's going to load everything into there for you. And of course, it's yelling at me that this particular one is not supported. That's OK. That's something else that I was experimenting. Now that you have that, all of your files are now imported here, and it's already sorted ahead of time. This is, again, why I'm teaching you guys have good file management, because if you just have them all in one folder, you are really going to be struggling. What, what sound effect am I trying to find? What video is it called? I don't remember. Is it image 8474 or is it 8475? All of those kind of things. You want to do your due diligence, file that out, type in the right names, make the folders, sort it all out ahead of time. Because as you're making this, you this is already going to take a while to develop. You don't want to be slowed down even more just because you have bad management with your files. All right. Now that you have your sources installed onto your project, now you're going to follow your script. I'm going to go ahead and close all of this stuff out because I know that you guys have done your due diligence and have made your scripts. I'm going to follow the one that I wrote for you. And we're going to start with the intro. I have narration here already for you. In my um, 
professional development that I was doing with my staff, I made them do their intro with a microphone. On this, I've already given it to you, and it, I think I even named it like, don't give this to staff. <laughs> so lucky you, you already have that there. Um, we're going to click on the down arrow for the audio, and you're going to see all of the different audio pieces. We're going to start there first to develop our timeline and our sequence so that we know where all of the pieces are going to flow here. So the first one, we're going to find our introduction. Yeah, it says intro, do not give to staff. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag it over to the right in the drop media to create sequence, and you're going to let go. And this is the beginning of your project. Now you have one piece in, and you're going to now take the rest of those pieces and drag and drop them in. You're going to see that Adobe Premiere is very intelligent, and it will naturally put the next piece right up against the next part so that it flows seamlessly in your project. So our next one is going to be stimulants, then depressants. So there's stimulants, and I'm going to just drag and drop it, and you can see it will auto snap it right next to the next one in line. We're going to go to depressants, and we're going to put that in next. This particular one, we're going to have to do some editing, and you'll hear that in a minute. All right, where's my script at? Uh, hallucinogens and other. Okay, there's hallucinogens. And now other, now I'm running out of space here. So something that you want to know, some shortcut keys, and you're probably going to want to write some notes down here for this part. The plus sign next to your backspace key will zoom in. The minus key next to that will zoom out. There's my go. And if you want to zoom out and see all of it from beginning to end, you're going to hit the backslash key, which should be underneath backspace or above enter. And if you do that, it will automatically squeeze everything from start to finish. Now I have enough room to go ahead and throw in uh, the other category. I'm going to drag that over as well and drop it into place. And again, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit that backslash key so I can see everything there. I just want to take a moment. I want to make sure that everybody has those pieces in before I move on to the digital part, or I'm sorry, with the video pieces. Looks good. Looks good. Everybody good? Okay. As a teacher, this is where I look around the room. I make sure, is everybody on the same page? Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, from here, what I would do even before I put in video is I'm going to listen and I'm going to hear how the audio sounds and I'm going to start making some initial cuts because some of this stuff is not going to sound right. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the first piece here. Uh, click on that plus 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 plus. You're going to see that there's some gaps even. Maybe I want to get rid of that. And I want it to start right away. I don't want to pause. And you'll also hear there's some lip smacking that I do. I needed a little bit of water maybe, and I need to take that part out. So we're just going to listen once, and then I'm going to show you how to cut the parts out that you don't want. So let's see. big gap. And there's my lip smack. So. You can hear in there, there is a gap. Maybe I want a gap, but maybe I don't want that white noise in the background. If I don't want that, all I have to do here is move my cursor. You can just slide this over with your mouse to where you want it at. And then from your tool menu, right now we have selection. We're gonna drop down to the razor and we're gonna click on that. The razor tool, you're going to use a lot when you're doing your video editing. And this is just to clean up your video and your audio so that it doesn't sound unprofessional. We're going to find that spot where I want to cut it. We're going to click on that. 
and you're going to see now your piece has been split. I'm going to continue moving over here. It doesn't have to be lined up perfectly here. You can kind of eyeball it if you want. You can see with your eyes that this is where that kind of lip smack happens. So I'm going to cut that piece out here as well on both sides, the left and the right. And now that I've made my cuts, I can clear out those bad parts that I don't want. I'm going to go back up to my selection tool, and then I'm going to select those pieces that I don't want. And then I'm just going to hit the delete key. Okay. So I'm going to click on that, hit delete. I'm going to go over here to my lip smack and hit delete again. And then again, Adobe Premiere is very intuitive and awesome with this. I want to push all this over back. I don't want to have to click on this, drag it over, go to the next one, drag it over. Now I have this big gap that has created this cascade effect. Instead, I'm just going to get rid of this white space. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to hit the delete key and everything is going to shift over for me automatically. This is a wonderful time saver. I'm going to go back here again, doing the same thing. There's an empty gap. I'm going to hit delete. Everything gets pushed over. Now you're not going to see that effect happen if you have up here in your different layers, if there's other media there, maybe it's a different you know, picture, maybe it's a video or whatever, it doesn't want to cut any of those parts off because then it will shorten it and maybe that's not what you want. So Adobe will not move everything over if there's things above it that will interfere with that process of shifting. Scott, uh, Ali has yeah. a question related to that. She says, sure. do you ever just mute those pieces if you wanted the pause to fill the whole time frame? Yeah, you can. That's perfectly acceptable. And then another piece, I'll just undo this really quick. If I do want to keep that, something that I would recommend, um, if you are going to do that, you're going to right click on that piece and you can change the audio gain and turn it all the way down to nothing. You'll. This is something that we're gonna do later with um, the music files. You don't want the music blasting while you're trying to talk. So you might lower this by, you know, maybe minus 30 decibels or maybe even more, um, just to make sure that it's all zeroed out. But I have personally found that by having it there, you're like, what is that? Why is that there? You can just cut that out and leave it like that, and that's okay too. And maybe you put in some media on top of it. You don't have any, you know, voice or anything speaking. It's better to just get rid of it altogether and maybe have that other piece in there. Otherwise, it could be distracting when you're trying to put other pieces together. Great. Sure. All right, are we good with that? So far, so good. All right, so I don't want to take too much time. This is a very tedious part. Listening through, maybe there's a little bit of a gap here that you need to get rid of. Maybe there's some more lip smacking, so on and so forth. What I want to jump to is in the depressant part. There's a part that I really goofed up. I was trying to pronounce the word correctly. It's a it's a scientific term and I was stumbling on that. I don't want any of that part there. So we're gonna just take a listen. We're gonna find that bad part that we don't want and we're gonna trim that off. And I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and work on your own to do that. There it is, right there. <laughs> there we go. See, you're going to do that when you're making your videos. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in on that part. This is where I have that big problem there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Zoom back out a little bit. And where did I get it right at? I think I got it here. 
Right there, okay. So I'll zoom in on that spot and I'll cut it there too. And then here's where I'll cut that big gap out because obviously there's a lot wrong with that. So delete that and then push it all together. This works by the way with video as well. People will maybe mess up their lines. Maybe they're supposed to look at the camera, but they're not, or they're not supposed to look at the camera and they are. Maybe there's a lens flare. There's all different kinds of problems that will happen when you're recording anything. So again, that tool, that razor tool, you're gonna use this a lot. Can I uh, go ahead and move on to the next part? Looks like it, I think so. Okay, all right. So now our next step is gonna be to kind of layer the, the next pieces of media. I don't wanna go through this and you know razor tool out all of the bad spots. I think you understand the process at this point. So we're gonna jump now to the beginning of our video. And now we're gonna start layering here and adding in the next pieces of media. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the audio for now. I'll go back to that and I'm gonna get my song at the end. Now I'm going to add in this picture. So in our video, I gave you a finished product of what it looks like when you're done. And video, you're going to see that we have a little text box area and you're gonna see a picture that I shamelessly, I stole this off of the internet, but again, this is for educational purposes. If um, this was a promotional product, again, for your company, you're gonna need to pay somebody for that or get permission or whatever you gotta do. So I don't wanna get you guys in trouble. All right, so I have some text on the left and I have a, an image on the right-hand side. So we're gonna go ahead and layer that over the audio. And we're gonna add this to the V1 level. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my pictures folder. And here I have body health for intro. And what you're gonna do, same thing, you're just gonna drag and drop it, but this time you're gonna put it on top of it. Now you have layers, okay? So we have body health for intro. We're gonna drag it over, let go. And as this plays now, you're going to see this now has that piece there. But as you can see, we don't see the whole thing. It is a very high resolution picture and we need to scale it down. It's too big for the screen. So we're gonna have to shrink it. Maybe it's super high definition and we need to change it back to high def, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on this, uh, on that pink piece, you're gonna see that item right there. And your effects controls is now buzzing and ready for you to mess around with this. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it down. You're gonna see that there's a scale feature here. And if you click there and you type in numbers, you can do that or You'll notice when you put your mouse on top of that, it's gonna to change to a Lindell finger and you can increase or decrease. If you hold your mouse key down, you're gonna be able to increase it by sliding right or decrease it by sliding left. And we wanna shrink it, so we're gonna go left. So I'm gonna hold down the key or the mouse button and I'm now going to scroll to the left until it fits at least vertically, it's gonna fill up the whole screen. And that looks close enough for me. Now we also wanna add text to this. And if I look at my source, this is pushed off to the right a little bit and I added a text box on top of it. So we need to also push this over to the right. So we're gonna change our position of where we have this particular object in our video. So the first position, this is vertical, or I'm sorry, that's horizontal. We're gonna push that over to the right as much as we can. And then the next one is vertical if we want that to go up or down, okay? So we're just making enough room so that we can fit in a text box 
to the left of this medical part, just like right here, how drugs affect the body, okay? Now that we have that moved, we're now going to add text because now we have a spot for it. We could type over this, but I don't want to distract the audience from that image. I want to just use that dead space that's there and fill it with something else. And I'm gonna throw in the title in there instead. So in our toolbox, we have selection, we have our razor. Now we're gonna go down to T for type tool. Go ahead and select that. And now you're gonna draw yourself a little text box, just like you would do in maybe Word or PowerPoint or whatever. And you're gonna try to fill that gap in as best as you can. Okay, now you have room to start typing. I'm just gonna type in some generic stuff right now so I get the right words in here. How drugs affect the body. So I'm gonna type in how, enter, drugs, enter, affect the body. And I'll let you guys go ahead and get that done. And then the next part that we're gonna do is we're gonna change one of two ways. We're gonna make our words bigger. And you can do this either you can scale it just like you did with the picture, or you can increase the font size if you wanna do it that way. It's really your choice, it doesn't matter because the same effect happens. So right now we have text and there's an eyeball there. If you don't wanna look at it for just a second, you can click on that eyeball and it'll make it disappear. It's there still, but it lets you see the different layers that are here. Um, I'm gonna put it back on there and I'm gonna to need to push this back over here because I did it at the end, oops. Um, let's get the scale right and everything and then we'll move it back over. So I'm gonna highlight my words and now if I want, I can go down here, hit the down arrow. I can change the font size. Or if I want, I can increase the scale. It doesn't matter which way you choose, honestly. I'm gonna just mess with the scale and I'm gonna blow this up pretty big. And now I'm gonna have to change the position. That's all right. Oh, there's so much lag because of the video that we're doing. Okay, I'm just gonna call that good because I'm seeing a lot of lag on my side. It's slowing right. down a little bit, but it looks yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, but that looks good enough for me, especially with, with our situation that we got with while we're streaming this. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do, just like in Word or PowerPoint or whatever, I'm gonna center it. On my video, I didn't. It's left justified, but I'm gonna center it anyway just to show you that you have these other options here. You can make things bold and, you know, just like all the other normal, you know, text editing functions that you can do. Oh, now I gotta move it again. Oop, no, I changed my font. No, go back. There we go. I need to push this back over. I don't wanna change my anchor point. There we go. How drugs affect the body, okay? And now we got things at least wrapped up to where they're supposed to be. Me being the perfectionist, I'm gonna to have to push this back over just a little bit to the left. And now you can see um, it's not here because it's out here under the like the four and a half to five second mark. You're gonna to want to layer that so that now they are on top of each other. So we have our audio, we have our picture, and then we have our text on top of that. And you can continue doing layers on top of each other for, I don't know if there is an end, there probably must be, but I've never found it yet for my own stuff that I've made. Ali is uh, pointing out that the word is uh, effect is spelled wrong, that it should be effect with an A. Is effect that with an A? Um, if, if I understand this right, maybe I'm wrong, but effect with an E, is if it has some kind of um it's like a cause and effect 
affect I think is supposed to be like interpersonal or mental or something else like that. Whereas effect is supposed to be maybe a physical effect or something else, but I could be wrong, but I, from my understanding, I think that's how it's supposed to be. Very good. Very good. It's uh, probably both. <laughs> I'm sure drugs affect you both ways. Let's, uh, let's carry on. Okay, so the next part is um, this just put an arbitrary four second limit on how long this was gonna take place in our timeline. Um, maybe we want it two seconds, maybe we want it longer. You can see that you can trim or extend by going to the end of your pieces and dragging them out to however long the duration is that you expect this to go for. And again, they will click into place based on any kind of like the cuts that we made or so on and so forth. Um, I could go through here and again, have you guys, um, that went, so that part went to the, it looked like the 10 second mark. So if I extended that out a little bit more, but I don't know if I want to have that happen. Um, we're gonna, let's see, that goes to the stimulants. Is this stimulants? Oh, okay, yeah, so we are gonna extend this out all the way to here. So go ahead and extend this to the end of that voice clip basically so that you will increase that time span of how long you see that there for. And then me being the nitpicky person that I am, I have to trim this little piece off at the end because that's my lip smacking. And I also have the stimulants part right here. So I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna cut it here. I wanna leave a little bit of empty space there. just so that we have a little bit of transition time in between the next part. So, oh, here's the bell again. Now we're gonna jump to our videos and we're gonna go to, um, I gotta look at my notes here. So it's not this one, I have it, uh, text overlay, man running. Okay, see, very, very clever words. <laughs> Man running, that's what our next part is gonna be. But we're gonna leave a little bit of a gap right here in the black or in the area just to have a little bit of a black transition before we get to our words here. Maybe I'll zoom in here. Have that happen, okay. A little bit of art goes into this, I guess. So I'm gonna drag man running. This is in the video box. I'm gonna go ahead and close picks. Man running, I'm gonna click and drag and drop that. You can put this all on V1. You only need to go to V2 if you're gonna layer things. Um, but this should work okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play that. And if I remember right, I think in my video, this is where I cut that part off. So I'm going to trim that out and move on to the next video right after that. So we'll cut that part out and then we'll go to the next one. Um, I remember there should be a time piece. I wanna show you one clock needs to increase the speed. I think that's a yes, okay. So this next part, sometimes you want to slow the video down or you wanna speed it up. And in this particular part, we're gonna to wanna to speed the clock up. We're gonna have that black gap right there just so we have another black transition just you know to piece things out here. That is called do, 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 wake up alert. So we're gonna drag wake up alert onto our screen next. Wake up alert, and we're gonna dump that in. And this 
needs to fall just up to here, this talking point right here, and we're gonna end it at that part. I could just clip it, or I can increase the speed, in which case it will take up less time. So by making it faster, uh, oops, I bumped it. That's why it's doing that. I don't want to do that. Select your clip, right click on top of it, and you're going to change the speed and duration. And I had in my notes, this should be 225%, 225. And I'm going to hit OK. And now again, as I speed that up, now that video is going to play back a lot faster. Okay, that's good enough. And so on and so forth. You're going to basically keep plugging and playing in here um, your pieces as you go on. I want to show you how to add in some transitions first uh, before we, we're done here because we're getting really close and I got to turn in my uh, computer. So I'm going to show you transitions and then I'm going to show you how to add in um, songs in the background and then to export your video and then we'll be done. So um, I wanted to add in stimulants over this guy's head. Um, we already have a text box, how drugs affect the body, but it's all limited in that little box over there on that part. This we wanna kind of spread it out over his head. So we're gonna go back to our text tool and draw it over his head. If I was gonna reuse this over and over, you can just copy and paste this and use it over and over again. You'll just erase stimulants and change it with depressants, just like you would in a Word document. Okay, so I'm gonna select a box here. I'm gonna select a box, there we go, it did it. It's just lagging. Stimulants, and I'm going to change the color of this so that we can actually see it. And I'm gonna center it a little bit more. Um, so I have that selected. I'm gonna go back to my text area over here in the effect controls. I'm gonna slide down to where fill is at. And right now the fill is white. We're gonna click on that. We're just gonna change the color to something else. You could do black, you can do green, whatever you feel comfortable with. And now I have it as a green color. I'm gonna undo that. Um, I should move this over. Let me just change that. And push it off to the right if I wanna do it that way. Oops, I moved it the wrong way. I think you guys get the point though. But once we have that, now we can do some transitions. Uh, I'm gonna extend this out to here. And what I want to do is basically fade this in and fade it out. So just like you would do in a PowerPoint presentation, how you have those special effects where things fade in, fade it out, or disappear, or wipe, or all of those, you know, PowerPoint things that you got going on. You're gonna add an effect to this. And on the bottom left part where all of your files are, you're going to click on this double right arrow and you're gonna to go to effects. And this is gonna bring up all of your different effects that you have. I mean, there's even audio effects. You can have things slow way down and change the baritone or whatever. I don't wanna go into too much with that because this is this will take a whole day too. Uh, we're going to go down to video transitions and we're just going to do something simple. We're going to go to dissolve and you can see they have all these different ones that are here. I'm going to add additive dissolve and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to put it right on top of the word stimulant. Now I could do it with um, the man running and have the guy's video fade in and fade out if I want, but I want the words to kind of fade in and fade out instead. And I'm gonna do it again at the end. So I'm gonna drag it over here and place it at the end. So it kind of fades in and it fades out. And if I wanted to increase the time 
of how long it takes to fade in and fade out. It's again, same thing. You're just gonna click and drag and it will add that transition for as long or as short as you want it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick. Stimulus fades in and then stimulants will fade out. Okay. So there's transitions. Let me show you how to add in music in the background and then you can export the file when you're all done. So last part, um, where did my stuff go? It's all gone. You're gonna click on that double right arrow and you're gonna go back to the project file that you made. And there's all of your stuff again. And now we're gonna add in the music file. So we're gonna go to our audio and we're going to find that song and that song is Chill Out in the Evening. And we're gonna grab that and now we're going to go to layer two, but we're going to go to audio two, A2, and we're going to put it at the beginning. Okay. Now, if you hear it, it's very loud. <laughs> you want to change the decibel level and make it quiet so it's playing softly in the background so that you can hear your voice. So you have your selection made with your song. You're gonna right click on top of that and you're gonna change the audio gain and you're gonna lower the audio gain by, you could go minus 20 or maybe minus 30, whatever sounds right. Some songs are louder than others, so it depends. I'm gonna do minus 30 and I'm just gonna listen to it and see how it sounds. That's good, I like that, minus 30 is fine. And then the last part that you can do is have it fade in and fade out with the audio. And you can do it, you can do this with any of the other audio pieces too. What you're gonna do for that is you're gonna use your pen tool. Now for this, you're gonna want to zoom in a little bit more so you can see where the lines are a little better. All of these windows, you can move them and resize them as you like. Right now I want a lot of extra space for this because I need to look at this really closely so that I can see the wave lines a little bit better. Okay, so now what I wanna do is have it kind of fade in softly from a you know soft voice to full noise and then fade out at the end. So we're gonna to go to our pen tool, okay? And we're gonna make a mark at the front of this line. And now you see that there's a little dot and then we're gonna add another one in, you know, kind of eyeball it. You, don't, you want it eight seconds, you want it five seconds in. How fast do you want that volume to crank up? So let's go, I'm just gonna to go to eight seconds. So now I have two and that's at full volume and it doesn't look like anything has changed. I want you to click on that first dot and I want you to drag it all the way down. And now you're gonna hear that kind of gradual fade in and it will start increasing in intensity in the volume. And then we're gonna do the opposite to that on the end part. So I'm gonna use that backslash key above the enter key to zoom out and I'm going to add two more dots at the end and I'm going to do the exact opposite that's a mirror okay so we'll put my cursor right around here somewhere and I'll zoom it in oh I gotta actually cut this so it fits our there we go and then we'll zoom in there and we'll add in our last little two pieces, one here at the end, and then another one like maybe here. And again, we'll just gradually fade that out. Okay. And I'll put my screen back to where it was. And I can, I should probably. that back up again, okay.
I think you guys get the point here. So, so our last step, we're done. We did all of our video editing. We have the sound effects in, we have our songs, all that stuff. We're ready to export our video. So we're gonna go to file, export, media, and it's gonna ask you what kind of settings do you want? Um, any special things, what format do you want it in? Do you want it in MP4, uh, AVI? Um, what I do for my high school students is I make them do H.264, which is kind of like a, a normal modern television right now. And after it thinks really, really hard, it's ready to export. And then my screen is not fighting, it's fighting with me, but I would hit the OK button down here below and it would go through that process. It's gonna pull up um, a new uh, software app and it's gonna run through that process with you and you just gotta go through the selection. So that should be it for you guys. Do you guys have any more final questions before I head out of here? Couple comments. Allie says, thank you so much. Thank you, Allie. And Nancy says, this has been a terrific class. I will watch again and again. Have a great summer. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, this is a lot to take in in one hour. This is a real tough crash course. <laughs> sure but, is. Allie also wants um, to know if you have any acceptable alternatives to Adobe Premiere Pro. So with my students, um, I used to do, um, oh gosh, I have to go back here a little bit. Let me go back to my video production. Yeah, this is my alarm telling me I got to turn in my stuff. Hold on. <laughs> They'll forgive me, right? <laughs> um, video pad editor, that's it. So we used video pad editor. It's even simpler than this um i would say that um i think it was like 50 dollars or something like that um it's a lot of drag and drop very easy but you don't have all of the tools that adobe premiere does um one of the things that i, I just ran out of time um adobe premiere can also open up um it, like for example, if I want to make the song, uh, oh, what am I thinking? I want to, I want to make the song exactly two minutes long, and the song is two minutes and thirty seconds long. There is a way that you can edit this, where uh, uh, Adobe Audition, you can edit that clip and you can remix it and it will automatically shrink the time down it will in its sophisticated ways figure out similar patterns and cut out the ones that are repeated so it will shrink it down to the right size or it will increase it and add in those loops for you automatically to extend it to the right time that you want it to you're not going to get that with a lot of other software and that's just one example Excellent. Well, I know I know you're on a tight time frame, Scott. And yes. <laughs> uh, so why don't we wrap it up once again, everyone? Thank sure. you for tuning in. And I put uh, Scott's email in the chat. I'll be following up this show with a video recording of the lesson and all of those resources again, so that you can go ahead and work through these exercises. And do feel free to reach out and get in touch with either me or Scott, and we'll make sure to connect you with him so that you can get some more help if you're interested. Thank you. And again, that offers out there if you uh, want to do internships or whatever, if you're interested in that, just reach out to me and let me know. That'd be great. That'd be great. And uh, again, if you have a, an opportunity for a young person, a high school student mm -hmm. to uh, work at your small business this summer, then pass that along as well. That'd be a really nice mm -hmm. way to you know, share, share some of the experience back and help out a young person. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Scott. We're going to have you sure. back for another program which will be announced very happy it's gonna be yeah. great all right thank you guys and uh see you next time